One second day again with me, Dart, uh, as a co-caster, we'll be covering the five matches that are going to be taking place today. Uh, we have quite a few interesting matches that are going to be coming up. Yesterday was pretty intense, uh, a few weird games, to be honest, but uh, you have to expect those in a tournament where qualifiers come in. How are you doing, man? I'm doing very well. I'm actually really excited for some of the games today, especially the first match. After seeing Toyota play against Strife Crow yesterday, unfortunately, his lineup didn't do what it was supposed to. But it was the most exciting games I've seen in Hearthstone in a long, long time. Yeah, like, and I see he's playing again today. Actually, the first match we have we have is uh, Thoida versus Kang. So if Thoida brings unorthodox decks again, which I fully expect from him at this point, we're probably gonna get at least uh, you know a bit of a surprise there. Absolutely. So taking a look at their deck sets, I think both players are just about ready to go in. So we can might as well start discussing the classes. Toyota has brought Mage, Priest, and Hunter. So I'd like to point out that Priest and Mage are not all that common of decks right now, so I'm excited to see what versions he's brought. Meanwhile, he's up against Kang, who has Rogue, Druid, and Warrior, what seems like a little bit more of a standard lineup in the current meta. Um, Toyota's Mage has been banned. Meanwhile, Kang's Rogue has been banned. So we're going to actually see Toyota's Priest and Hunter versus Kang's Druid and Warrior. What do you expect to see with these matches? Like Priest uh, from Thoida, I don't even know what to expect. As I said, you know, he's a bit of an uh, unorthodox deck builder. So, like, he knows the game, he plays well, you know, the standard decks. Um, but he's going to be creative. And Priest is a class you can really do a lot, uh, novelty-wise. So we'll see exactly what that is. I wouldn't be surprised to see more of a standard list. But Temple Priest from Thoida wouldn't even surprise me. Mm -hmm. We, I have actually seen a little bit of an aggro priest on the ladder recently, where you use uh, Death Lords and Valen's Chosen and just buff up the board to a point that your opponent really can't answer it. it it's an interesting deck that seems to have worked in the past pretty well. Yeah, well, the so hunter we are hand going. Is, in <laughs> I don't know what's happening with the poor hunter hand at the moment. So we have spectator mode looks a little bit bugged currently. We're trying to get into the game, but it looks like <laughs> Kang is running a patron warrior. Yeah, with that Toyota's. patron. We can already see that Toyota has one interesting card in his hunter list uh, with the clockwork gnome. What do you think about that choice in the deck? I don't see anything wrong with it. I'm, I, I just wonder now if Toyota brought some kind of mech variant on typical hunter lists. Um, I wouldn't be like if anybody would pull it off. It's probably him. The advantage of Clockwork Gnome is that sometimes it can help you secure wins because Stealth and Freeze for a lot of uh, a lot of situations will act the same, where you just get an extra hit with a specific minion that you have. Um, so very often, getting either the Stealth part or the Emergency Coolant will do the same. And rewinding an Arcane Golem is good. Giving plus one attack to a minion is good. So most of the spare parts are pretty fitting for aggro decks. Absolutely, and taking a look at his hand, the one question I have about the Clockwork Gnome is the fact that he's also running Quick Shot. Those two cards are a little bit counterintuitive when they go with each other, being that the spare parts, a lot of time is Hunter, is you may not be able to actually use them on your minions. Um, if you're not doing a face version, the little attack, the uh, attack buff, or the armor plating, if your opponent doesn't let you have minions on board, it'll make it so you can never get the effect off a Quick Shot, which could put you in an awkward situation later in the game. The I mean I don't know like quick shot is used um, as a draw engine but very frequently and most frequently I think it's used as a removal piece kind of like a dark bomb so I think the times where that matters are uh, few and far between. All right. So well, I like the line of play right now, just wiping off this armor smith, using the knife juggler to push a little bit more damage, uh, trying to be a pretty standard face hunter at this point from what we can see. Do you assume it's face hunter? Web spinner doesn't seem to belong in the in a similar archetype. Unless I'm mistaken, Web Spinner is a bit of an oddball in face. That is true, but I'm a little confused as why he has Web Spinner and the Clockwork Gnome. Can you see any uh, reasoning behind that move? Yeah, my point exactly, right? Like, I'm not exactly sure what's happening. There is, it's, it might just be a mid-range hunter twist. Again, you know, Thoida known for bringing really unconventional decks. Like, he might be running one of his unique mid-range lists. We've seen him brought that, uh, bring that a while back. Uh, I think he was running Fang Death in that weird list, which would explain perhaps why he'd be bringing the Clockwork Gnome to the Web Spinner. You know, Midrange Hunter with Fang Death, those two cards don't seem too bad. Absolutely. Now, it uh, looks like Toyota will be punished just a little bit by this Death Bite, especially because he did play the Haunted Creeper before the Death Bite come out. And oh, for those yeah. who don't know, the Death Rattles actually go in order. 
So the little 1-1 one, one spiders will be popping out before the death spite, death rattle activates, so we'll actually take those 1-1s one, off the board with it. Yeah, the problem now, and that's even worse, is that the Grim Patron's coming out, um, and he's going to have to answer those as fast as he can, so that Shredder is going to have to come out. But the 1-1's one, dying... What, I mean, what would that's... you think about actually using Armor Piercing on your 1-1? One, one, keeping... Yeah, so it doesn't die, the web spinner, right? That's what exactly. I'm thinking. It makes a lot of sense. But, but at the same time, he may actually have wanted to think as to whether or not he wanted to let his web spinner die because a lot of the times a 1-1 one, one minion on board against a patron can be a liability while he could have actually picked up another beast that could have been more useful in this matchup later on. Right, I guess if you want to cycle the beast as soon as possible, that makes a lot of sense. It's effectively a loot hoarder in many cases, but keeping his hand empty helps quick shot go off, right? So maybe keeping the web spinner... On the board, as long as he has a quick shot, then he cycles it, then later he can get a web spinner value, would allow him to draw off the quick shot. Whereas mm -hmm. if he got the beast right now, and if it was, you know, a high cost of beast like a core hound, you can't play that with quick shot. That is going to be a drawback. Now, what do you think King's best move is right now? I'm personally leaning towards actually just using the Grim Patron and attacking into the Shredder. That way, even if the uh, Shredder pops out a two or three attack minion and kills off one of the patrons, it forces Toy to have, to have another answer for the 3-3 three, three patron that is left. Quickshot is going to be able to take care of that 3-3, three, three. Um, but from Kang's perspective, I could see that being a good play. Like, you haven't seen an Eaglehorn bow. Um, although Quickshot is probably in the range of things you pin your opponent on at this point, so maybe popping the Creeper is just as good in many cases. I guess having inner rage here would do a lot of work for him. So it looks like he actually opted to keep the Shredder alive, and oh, oh wow. that Ego Horn bow is what an a draw here for draw. Toyota. This is crazy good for Toyota. Now, do you think he actually wipes off the patrons with his quick shot, or runs his oh, Shredder quick shot into it all day? Quick shot. Yeah, I mean you're gonna draw off of it, right? Is there a reason not to? Can you think of one? So the question is, Is will the 2 damage now be worthwhile, or will saving it for another turn? I, I actually have to agree with you that the quick shot might be the better play to save the Shredder's damage for future turns. So he does opt to go with your play, and I, I have to agree with that after thinking about it for a little bit. And what's Khan going to do here? I mean, if you look at his hand, it's a little dry. He's got no removal piece. Sure, you found the patron, but that's a little, like, it's not going to be early enough to really make a difference at this point. Do you play Warsong Commander, Loot Hoarder, and smash into the Shredder to cycle, or...? I would personally... Ooh, that's actually a decent option, but I would strongly consider using Emperor Thorisane right now. It'll For allow your... Seven, um, patron? Exactly, it'll allow your turn 7 patron to possibly wipe your opponent's board, and st if you happen to draw an armor smith, uh, one turn later, he will be able to actually refill on health. While keeping Emperor Thorisand up, if Th so here's how it works. If you play Emperor Thorisand as a patron warrior, your opponent either kills you that turn or kills Emperor Thorisand. Or he Thorisand. deals with it, right. It's either you handle the Thorisand right now or you're killing your opponent outright. Toyota needs only two more damage to get lethal here, so maybe that's what Kang's worried about, right? It doesn't take mm -hmm. much. Kill Command does it. Second Quick Shot, Wolf Rider, Arcane Golem, Abusive Sergeant. So many cards in a typical Hunter deck could be lethal. So Kang's going to go for the draw. And hopefully, I think he's hoping to find... A whirlwind, perhaps, and execute for the web. Oh, oh God, no, that, that is, is the worst. <laughs> oh, that did nothing. The game is still not over, but that is not what he wanted to see there. Um, yeah. But here's the oh, question: Do you wow. expect the eagle horn bow to kill off this war song, or at this point, do you think it's just going face and playing down the uh, freezing trap to put down the pressure? I might uh, kill the war song with the freezing trap and go fa uh, with the bow, put down freezing trap, and then kill everything else because the what that does is that it doesn't allow any minute with charge number one because you kill the war song to uh to really tank the freezing trap or let the war song give charge to something else and then have it face tank the the freezing trap so by doing so you're preventing about two turns of tempo on your opponents by playing the freezing trap afterwards <laughs> i mean this is so going to be really difficult for kang to catch up from Exactly, and it's a little bit unfortunate because most people actually put the favor towards the Patron Warrior by a little bit in this matchup, but just drawing into double Gnomish Inventor is not what you want to see in the early game. You really need, he did have the Cruel Taskmaster, but you need the weapons, you need the Armor Smiths eventually to get off the uh, uh, full armor buffs and keep you in the game. 
He he's needs Whirlwind here, right? Stuff. That's the only card that can save him. And unfortunately, he does not get it. So Toyota will be taking game one with Hunter over Page Warrior. I I mean, I guess uh, Hunter can take games off of anyone. I didn't see, like, we saw some unorthodox choices in Toyota's deck, but nothing crazy like what we saw, mm -hmm. you know, yesterday with the absolute anti-Hunter lineup. What I'm wondering is what type of deck he might have been targeting with the Hunter Priest Mage. Because um, that seems a bit, uh, how to say that, hetero like heterogeneous, like he just has decks that be different things. I don't see how Priest and Hunter beat the same types of decks uh, amongst themselves. So the fact that he banned Rogue, I would have to guess that his mage was some type of aggro mage. So if he's running, think of, let's say he's running an aggro mage, a standard Priest and Hunter, what type of deck is that usually targeting? Aggro Mage, Hunter, and Priest. I guess you could... Well, if, if it wasn't even mid-range Hunter, at least we don't know, do we? No, it's actually... You don't have the full he information, just, right? He may have just brought three decks that he felt comfortable with and kind of dropped his uh, strategy from yesterday. Well, Thoida just picked up the sickest Priest hand I've ever seen. It's only missing a Northshire Cleric to be the oh, ultimate wow. draw. This is the best hand a priest can hope for for control, and then transitioning but, to the late game is going to be pretty simple. At the same time, I have to disagree that it's the best hand against a druid. I think the best possible start against a druid is the blade master into a circle of healing. That's the most difficult card you can have for a druid to deal with. Meanwhile, the two threes are kind of start poking away at the druid, but really won't be enough to seal the game. And he does pick up the injured blade master, so we have to see if he actually gets a circle in order to combo this off. He's asking himself now, do I ever coin out a 3-drop here? I mean, if you do, it's going to be Dark Cultist, but... Mm -hmm. I mean, anytime time think... Druid picks up... Okay, it must have been an anti-warrior lineup. That is very possible. I mean, but the Hunter, seems... how could it become, like, uh, uh, an anti-warrior deck? That's kind of what I'm, I'm trying to I'm not sure it out. can. Yeah. So what do you think Kang does in this position? Would you uh, innervate out the Lothib like he is doing, or would you try to be a little bit more patient and just allow the Shade to start getting buffed up? No, I really like the the low that play. What it does is that it's gonna kill the zombie chows before they really get out of hand, and it's denying the Valence chosen if there is one, and Shadow of Death can't be played. So you're at least gonna be able to trade possibly two for one with that low thub. Of course, Innervate was used, but you have Keeper of the Grove on the back end if need be. I really like that play. I think it's uh like tempo wise, he's gonna have to recover because priests typically don't have early game tempo, but when they take it, they never let go of it, and that is mm -hmm. the biggest problem you run into. And especially now, he is kind of an awkward turn, because if he does swipe the 3-4 off the board, the 2-3 just does get buffed to a 2-6. Actually, it would leave him with 5 health here, so... But he'd be okay, because, you know, Lothab lives through the zombie chow, unless Valence Chosen gets played, and then he can keep her that off. I mean, it should be fairly simple. I don't think he's in that bad of a spot at the moment. I'd Although have to Belcher... imagine a Sludge Belcher this turn. What do you think? Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. I mean, you, you mentioned how Lothab was really good against Belchers. Um, in this position, a little less, right? Because mm -hmm. she's going to die from it. But she's already gotten the uh, the zombie child that was buffed by Power Shield. So far, not too bad. But Kang's going to have to pick up an Ancient of Lore um, in order to keep going. Because the late game looks like it... If it keeps going this way, Thoida is in a great spot to pick that one up. Like, late game is really important. Absolutely. It's if he can survive for the Sarah to come out without getting comboed down here, I think Toyota will be in an unbelievable position. Um So now King has actually a few options. How do you like silencing Belcher and killing the Chow? Is that ever yeah. a play? That's actually a decent play because he's not going on to Toyota's turn six play for Cabal Shadow Priest and he had just used the coin, so that would be safer right now. But at the same time, Belcher is more mana efficient. And then after turn six, he always, always, always has to worry about his keeper. So getting him down early may be a worthwhile play, even though it's less mana efficient in the current state. Oh, he does go for the silence play. So he's playing for value, realizing that to counter the priest's tempo, he's going to have to get value trades uh, going on. Oh, Cabal's picked up. But, I mean, is Ken going to be able to sacrifice his keeper before that happens? I don't think so. And he's also a bit of mana off to play the Akanai. And Thoida is not in the position he wanted to be in here. Mm -hmm. I really like King's decision actually there to not kill off the uh, Belcher and leaving his Lothab alive, knowing 
that priest has no good way to deal one damage. Of course, he's worried about something like Holy Nova, but Shadow there, Madness, I guess. Shadow Madness would be crazy strong here. Shadow Madness would be actually a good play. Yeah. But that card's actually slowly even dropping out of the priest decks in more favor of the aggro style. So, mm -hmm. what do you think Toyota's best move is here at this point? I would play Injured Blade Master, heal it up, and sacrifice the Belcher. Um, that way, you can always steal the two four with Cabal. You could even pass. Actually, I'm not even disliking that. Like it's either you play Injured Heal or you end up passing it. Harrison Jones. All right, so he gets it out of the board right now. It's going to bait that second keeper for sure. Oh, it's so mad and efficient though, and you're running into Cabal turn. You know what? This is so wonky. And okay, well, I think this would be a good turn to play Double Shade, being that he did not have Holy Nova the previous turn. Um, I wouldn't so mind seeing du Double Shade and sacrificing your two four just in case, allowing you to trade off one shade the following turn if necessary. That is that is an all in play, but I see where you're coming from. It, it's mm -hmm, pretty all in, like it, like you take the tail, right? That the Holy Nova wasn't in the player's hand. You assume exactly. that he would have preferred playing it than Harrison Jones if, if it hadn't been there. Absolutely. So to Toyota for sure gave a sign that he did not have Holy Nova. So if Kang actually makes that read, he should realize that now is the time he needs to play the shades before Toyota gets the opportunity to actually do it himself. Whether or not he runs a two four in is a little bit risky. Um, I'd have to guess that he will, just because if it does get Cabal, that usually means the game will be over. But he still gets the slime here, so it's like it's not exactly as powerful. Let's be honest, but it's still a Absolutely. pretty okay, pretty okay. He outcome. would much, he would much rather a slime be Cabal instead of a two four. It's a one two right. versus a two four. Uh, and the amount of health it has really makes the priest's ability, like the the heal it up, super dangerous against you. Absolutely. Another question, is Toyota going to be content with the slime, or is he just going to play the injured and lighter the Naruit and heal the Harrison Jones? I, like, there's so many plays. One of them is weak to swipe. I wonder. I think his safest move is just attack in and use the Cabal. Get the value right now. It puts yourself with a 1-2 and a 4-5 against a Drew. It's nothing. Um... Then, if he expects the Ancient of Lore to come out, the only problem with that move is he doesn't have a great answer. Well, he Wait, does have I Akinai that. Light of the Naru, yeah. You're right, he would have the Akinai Light of the Naru and his hero power to kill it off. So I think that's actually a great uh, line of play here. Yeah, Kabal really plays into the turn 7 of uh, Ancient of Lore very nicely. Because Akinai would Light of the Naru, plus the ping is going to spawn the light to Arden and do more than that. And now Kang's gonna start dropping the tempo minions that he wished he could have dropped earlier in the game. The priest was really over this board for the like the first four turns, which really didn't give him much choice. Absolutely. Now I think with the Akanai Light of the Hour, it's still gonna come down, it's still gonna be affecting the board. Um This is one matchup that's interesting. It used to be that Druid had major, major, major advantage over priest decks. However, with the new cards such as uh, Light of the Naru that allows you to wipe the board with um, Akanai Soul Priest while gaining a board yourself, really seems to have swung it towards the Priest's favor in general. Even Shrinkmeister, like you, I, I know Kalento brought it non-stop for the longest time, um, and it, that really helped him basically play into people's weaknesses because everybody was bringing Druid for a time and every time I saw that matchup I thought to myself this is gonna be really difficult to win but the priest kept winning because Shrinkmeister and Light of the Naru just gave him that extra bit of removal that he didn't have before Absolutely, and now, nowadays pre or, uh, priests are kind of playing, even if they're the standard control priests, they play kind of an aggro fashion in terms of getting minions on the board, flooding the board. And again, druids just have an incredibly difficult time dealing with it. They cannot catch up from a board state like the one that Toyota yeah. has. Yeah, they've got no, uh, and I said that a while back, like, they have no whiplash mechanic, right? Like once they're out of the game, they're just out and there's nothing to bring them back in. Um, I, I guess you could play Poison Seas and Starfall with a Volcanic Lumberer, but... Um, you're going to play that in a very specific deck, not in just your uh, run-of-the-mill mid-range druid for sure. Absolutely. So what do you think King's best option is this turn? Obviously, nothing great, but he has yeah. to do something. <laughs> you don't say. I mean, I, I'd be... Uh, I, I, he's probably going to be forced to use Wrath as a cycle mechanic. 
Just as because he can then keep with the grow of the one two. Oh wow. Well, I mean that's a card draw in you know a few turns. <laughs> That's a little bit surprising. I would have actually prefer to see Emperor Thorasan because it, it, he's at the position where if his opponent does not have Shadow or Death, he might have come back into it. Otherwise, if he did have the Shadow or Death or, as we see, a Holy Fire, it would have been game over anyway. So, so I think he should have taken kind of a risky play there and thrown down the Emperor, hoping to get at least a one-for-one one with one of the either the 3-5 or 4-5 minions. If he top deck swipe, he's still in not that bad of a spot, though. Mm -hmm. It's like, it, there are a few cards in his deck that could help him, and the Priest is not going to kill him now. It's going to be about two to three turns, so if he does catch a good Ancient of Lore or a good sequence of spells, and the Shades can start trading up, right? They still need a, a few turns to buffer themselves up before they can make good trades, but once they do, Priest is going to have to handle them as well. Absolutely. If Soiden makes the misplay of bringing the injured, I'm gonna, I'm gonna die. Even a back-to-back -back draw the combo right now wouldn't be an end-of-the-world scenario, because in two turns they'll have a 5-5 five -five and a 4-4 four -four shade. That will give him a 27 damage combo, uh, and he's unfortunately one damage off. Yeah. So he has to somehow weave a hero power in, get back-to-back -back draws with combo. So this, if there's a swipe off the top, this could be super big, but that is not it. Big Game Hunter is not what he wanted to see. So, keep so the he's growth. facing down... How much damage is he currently facing down on board? He's got 15, which is lethal, but he does not know that Holy Fire is in his opponent's hand. Right, because that gives him an extra bit of reach. I guess you have to go Keeper, BGH, and Hero Power Attack Face. What do you trade your 3-3 into the 4-3? Is my guess... I think it's necessary, but... Yeah, I mean, he, from this may, position, Kang is going to be... He could hope that his opponent doesn't have something like Holy Fire in his hand and actually just use Keeper on the 3-2, play Big Game Hunter and Hero Power Face, and keep his uh, minions locked down. But, I, again, I don't see how he comes back from this position. I think he's really got to trade the 3-3 away in the 4-3, 4-4 on Light Warden, and play BGH for Tempo. Like he, he knows that if he doesn't wipe this board, this game is pretty much over. Mm -hmm. He's got to know. Even killing maybe the Ark and I wouldn't be too bad if you'd prefer to do that. That's okay, two that's damage off play. instead of four. And now you have to kill the Light Warden. But he's still dead. But unfortunately, unfortunately. <laughs> this is still game over with the Holy Fire in hand. Eight plus five equals 13. Can Toy to do a little bit of math? Yeah, I guess so. Alright, so he does take the first win. Well, the second win, that is, against Kang. Which means he's winning the first match of the day. 2-0. Um, that was a pretty quick series. And Toyda, again, I think, picking more comfortable decks this time around than the innovative, you know, uh, out-of-the-box thinking that we saw him do yesterday with heavy targeting. Um, I, I think his lineup was just a fairly standard, like, standard, solid, well-rounded lineup. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, and for those who don't know, yesterday when Toyda actually was facing Strife Crow, he did bring two anti-hunter decks, possibly the most anti-hunter decks we've ever <laughs> seen. And like a druid with double anti-heal bot, ancient of war, zombie chows, druid of the flame, and then a paladin with I think we saw seven heals in his paladin deck. Two lay on but, hands, yeah. There definitely was two lay on hands in that deck. And he also had the um what is it, the 7 mana 5-6 at heals? Right, Guardian of the, the Kings. Kings with the uh, heal boss as well on top of that. So that was like the most all-in lineup against Hunter. But he was incredibly punished as Strife Crow's Hunter actually did win the first game against Druid. So I think at that point he kind of gave up the match. So this today he really seemed to bring more overall standard decks and I think it paid off. Yeah, and it makes a lot more sense, right? If you don't have enough information about your opponent, in the case of Kang, probably an unknown name to Thoida, that's going to be really hard, you know, to pin him on an archetype that he's going to play. Um, mm -hmm. So targeting a specific deck doesn't make much sense. Uh, so he got punished yesterday, unfortunately for him. But now that worked out, so that's the first win he's getting in this entire event. We've got four weeks of uh, of matches coming up in the Vulcan Deck Masters. This is the first match of the day. We're going to have another one after this. I, it's supposed to be show versus Tides of Time. We'll give you uh, an update on this when we do come back. We're going to take a quick break between uh, between the matches. So we'll be right back. Don't go anywhere.